What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we are doing the full review on the Hoover Wind Tunnel T-Series Purely Clean. Now, the reason why I'm doing this review at this exact moment is because there was someone local who was wanting to buy this machine, so I figured I would go ahead and get the review done on this, so that way, as soon as I'm done filming this review, I can go ahead and bring it to her and hopefully make a handsome 40 bucks. Now, this review is going to be a little bit shorter than a lot of my other in-depth reviews, and the reason why is because at the same time that, or I should say, after I review this, I'll be reviewing the Hoover Wind Tunnel T-Series Tempo, also known as the Wind Tunnel Bag, which is basically the exact same machine to this. So, as a result, the general usage and performance and all that will mostly be commented on whenever I do a much longer term review and a much more in-depth review on this machine right here. So that's something to keep in mind. If this review seems a little bit short, lacking the usual tests and commentary that I often do in my vacuum reviews these days, the reason why is because I'm going to save a lot of that stuff for the tempo. Reason being, these two are nearly identical machines. In fact, we'll just go ahead and go over the differences really quick in case you are looking at the bagless version. Well, first off, the most relevant discrepancy between these two is that as of now this bagless version that you see has actually been discontinued so this review isn't going to be the most useful in the world whereas in the case of this Hoover Tempo at least for the time being it is still currently in production although there is a newer model that just now came out that is supposedly replacing this it is unclear yet whether that will actually mean that this model gets discontinued or that machine will simply supplement it in Hoover's lineup. I'm Kind of leaning towards the former. I don't. I don't think this machine will be on the market for that much longer. It seems like this style of T-series wind tunnel that TTI created many, well, about a decade ago, is slowly dying off, and it seems like it is getting close to the end of that. That being said, reviewing this bagless machine will be pretty interesting because it'll be essentially a retrospective review at how this platform lasted for as long as it did. The green version of this machine that is nearly identical but just doesn't have a brushable shutoff switch is an incredibly common machine that you can find secondhand, and even this machine is very similar in that regard. So we will comment on its performance and usability and see if the woman who is buying this for $40 is getting a good deal on it. Now I may be a bit biased, but I think she is, <laughs> but we will see. So starting out, as far as whenever you do want to go and use this machine, this machine does have a cord rewind, which the Tempo does not. So you have a cord right here, just pull it straight out. Now, sometimes they sound a little bit rough after a while. You push this button right here, and the cord slinkies back into the machine. Now, depending on how old the machine is, this can potentially age over time. You're going to say once in a while there will be a little nick in the cord that will kind of get in the way of it. But yeah, so you can see it's starting to slow down a little bit. You can see there's a yellow marker right here. And actually, there's a little spot where the cord is frayed a little bit, but there's no copper shown, so it's not a big deal. But once you get to this yellow portion, you want to make sure to not pull the cord out any further. And once you plug it in, I assume this is turned off. Yes, it is. Once you get to that point, you can actually take this cord, and there is an upper cord hook right up here on the top of the handle. You just clip it right in. And that helps hold the cord out of the way. So that way when you're vacuuming, even though the cord is mounted pretty low, it still doesn't really have too much of an issue, much like with the Tempo. So as far as reclining the machine, there is a release pedal right back here. Push that, and the machine reclines. It actually gets a pretty decent amount low, but it doesn't get quite as low as the Tempo because this whole bagless chamber does add a little bit of width to it. So it's a little bit harder to get underneath things, and unlike some other machines, like the Sanitaire SL4110A that I'll be reviewing soon, this doesn't actually lie all the way flat. You can see the base actually lifts up when you get close to, right about here is when the base starts to lift up. So getting underneath any sort of low furniture is pretty much out of the question. But for my usage, trying to get underneath a basic Walmart coffee table, it's perfectly sufficient. Not ideal, but it does get the job done. But if you have any sort of low furniture you're trying to get underneath, that could potentially be a problem. Although that generally is for pretty much all bagless vacuums. It just kind of comes in the territory because this whole round 
cylinder system definitely adds a lot of bulk to the front of the, of the machine. So one other thing is that right down here, we have a pedal to turn the brush roll on and off. Now this machine uses a serpentine long length belt. I will link the belt in the description. Now I usually store it on the off position, same story with my tempo. So whenever it's pushed in like this, it's in the off position where you can see the gap right here. That means it's turned off. That means the brush roll is not spinning. Then when you push this button and it pops up like that, that means the brush roll is now engaged. So now when you're wanting to use it on carpets, that's when you put it on that setting. When you want to use it on bare floors or use it for above floor cleaning when you're using the tools, you want to push this back down and that will turn off the brush roll. Now this model does not have any sort of feature that automatically turns the brush roll off whenever it's in upright mode. So whenever you go to push it in the upright mode, you have to manually push this button to turn off the brush. And it's recommended, greatly recommended in fact, that you actually shut off the machine before you mess with this switch. And make sure the brush roll stops spinning before you engage this switch if it was spinning prior because otherwise you could artificially lower the life of this belt so the nice thing about this machine is that the belt is easy to get to so if we do recline this and flip it over it's not as easy as using a carry handle on the back but we flip, flip this over you can see right here that we have access to the brush plate and the nice thing is, and again, the tempo is the exact same way, you have no tools to access this. You just have a little gate right here. You just slide this over to the left side from this little tab where you just move up and out of the way. And you can pull off the base tray and get to it pretty easily. So if you're trying to clean any sort of hair off the brush roll or you're trying to get a hold of this belt, that is fine. Now in my case, since the belt is off, the belt is a little bit loose. That's to be expected. So yeah. Pretty simple, and of course you have access to the inlet right here to get to the main house, so if something gets blocked in here, pretty easy to get to. One other thing is that this does have off-center suction, but it actually isn't too far off-center. The center of the actual tab is right here, and the hose is right here, so it is relatively close to the center considering the design of the hose, but you will have uneven cleaning on this side, so really this is the main portion that will actually be cleaning your carpets effectively. Now speaking of cleaning carpets, one thing that's really nice about both these machines is that these are actually approved by the Carpet and Rug Institute. So these actually have been tested professionally and they do in fact clean carpets fairly well. I actually found the performance of this machine, despite its age, to actually be better than the Tempo, despite the Tempo being brand new and this machine being about a decade old. In fact, if I look at the date code, the manufacturing code is I11A, so this is from 2011. So this is over a decade old at this point and the brush roll on this is still in good condition but it is perfectly easy to get to now you want to make sure that when you have the brush roll turned off you want to make sure the brush roll spins freely if not the bearings may be seized up and you may need to replace your brush roller so putting this back in the upright position one thing that i've not liked about this machine of course there's going to be a bunch of sounds in the background in the middle of me filming this and of course someone's calling me but oh <laughs> as we can see one of the things that is interesting about this that i don't like is that the actual base on these machines have a tendency to warp if you see this wheel right here is actually kind of bent the axle is kind of bent a little bit and that's a problem that I've seen with these machines quite a lot. So if you're very rough with these machines, you could potentially warp or damage these bases. So if you have one of these, keep that in mind. Now there is a version of this machine that has a folding handle and rubber coated wheels. I did have that version. Literally those are the only two differences is that that version has a folding handle and rubber coated wheels. Folding handle, I didn't really like. It was nice for storage, yes, but it did make it to where the actual handle felt a lot cheaper and a lot more flimsy. Whereas this one does not have that problem because the handle feels a lot sturdier. So there is a trade-off there. And of course that model is even older and even harder to find. However, the rubber coated wheels was actually a really nice feature. And I wish that that was a feature on both these machines. Unfortunately, it isn't. So you got to be careful. Otherwise, these will, wheels will scratch your bare floors. So that's something to keep in mind and be careful about. Back here, we have a hose with a little release lever. You just press that button and the hose pops right out. Now this hose is pretty interesting because it's actually an external fitting, or it's a uh, convex fitting? I don't know how you'd say that. Basically, 
the tools fit inside the hose instead of the actual tools fitting over the hose. So the hose is actually wider and the tools fit inside it. Now, what that means is that the attachments that this machine comes with is pretty good. But if you want to replace them, you actually can do that since this is a standard inch and a quarter fitting. But in order to do that, a lot of those tools are designed to have whatever connector that goes into the tools be inside. So when you attach the extension wand, now you have an inch and a quarter adapter. So if you want to attach any sort of generic or third party attachments, you can in fact do that. Oh, as soon as I go to answer the call, they hung up. It's probably Samsung who scammed me. But yeah, so this does allow you to put any sort of standard inch and a quarter attachments on the end of it. I don't have any with me right now. I don't feel like grabbing any, but that will allow you to fit the attachments right on the end of there. You have one extension wand. It's not a ton of reach. This hose doesn't stretch all that much. As far as trying to get up the stairs, this only gets up to about seven or eight steps comfortably. Um, I found that Tempo actually reaches a little bit better than this machine does, probably because the hose is mounted a little bit lower. So this machine only gets up to about seven steps, whereas the other Tempo gets up to about eight steps, not much of a difference. Either way, neither of these hoses are gonna be able to stretch all the way up to the top of your stairs. But for trying to get above the floor, if your ceiling isn't too highly mounted, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. You do have this extension wand and you can buy extra extension wands to give you more reach as well. Got this tool right here, and this is all pretty decent. I've noticed that both of these actually are often warped out of the box. We can see there's like a small bend to both of these, which is not ideal, but they're just attachments, so it's not the end of the world. And of course, the crevice tool stores inside the extension wand and stores right here on the side of the machine. And those work as advertised. Here we have a combination dusting brush and upholstery tool. It's more so just a dusting brush with bristles that are really too stiff to do any delicate dusting, but also too soft to be an adequate upholstery brush. So I find that for dusting things off like coffee tables, uh, blinds, drapes, you know, that sort of thing, this does fine. I wouldn't do anything delicate like a TV because these bristles are too hard and they could potentially scratch any delicate surfaces or anything made of glass, for example. If you're trying to use this to as an upholstery brush to get something like pet hair off of a chair or something, it does do pretty well at that. So it actually is a relatively effective upholstery brush. So compared to a lot of other like multi-use tools for dusting and upholstery that I've seen from other brands, this isn't too bad. Although the ones on the newer Hoovers are a lot better at dusting. But the good news is, is if you feel that, that is not satisfactory for your upholstery, Hoover does include an air-powered turbo brush. This is pretty standard. It's been on Hoovers for about two decades now. And I found this tool to be relatively underwhelming. The bristles are really soft. And after using several of these, because I own like three or four of these at this point, after using all of them, they all have their own issues. This one, the actual brush roller has a lot of play in it. So it has a lot of vibration and buzz when you're using it. It is somewhat effective at cleaning up pet hair and obviously crumbs and all that is just fine but it's very loud. It doesn't seem to be built all that well. And once in a while, I'll get one of these tools in, especially on my brand new Tempo, where it makes like a rattling noise and the turbine will just stop and jam itself for no reason, even though there's no debris clogged in it. So this is not the best upholstery tool ever, but it is better than some similar offerings from other companies like Bissell, at least in the sub $100 price range. The more expensive ones do a lot better than these. But you do have two screws to access the turbo brush, so if you do get something jammed in here in the turbine or something stuck in here and you just want to clean it out, you can do that pretty easily. And that just stores on a clip right here on the top of the machine. And if for whatever reason you want to remove this clip because it gets in the way of the bin, which it often does, you can just simply pull this entire part off and store that aside if you want to. So you can choose whether or not you want the turbo brush on board. A little bit tricky to get back on there, but once you line it up, it snaps right in just fine. And I actually found that this older machine, the turbo brush actually fits on here more securely than it does on the brand new Tempo, which I don't like. And the hose wraps around right here, clicks back in just like that, and that's pretty self-explanatory. This bottom piece is held in with a screw, so if you want to remove the hose from this part, you do have to remove a screw. But I actually kind of like this because while it does shorten your hose a little bit, it means that since you're pulling the hose from the bottom of the machine, the vacuum is much less likely to tip over. 
So when you're actually using it, you're less likely to have the vacuum fall and hit you while you're trying to clean. Going back to this base, we do have a five position height adjustment right here. Whenever you're using this on bare floors with a brush roll off, you want to put it all the way on the low setting. You push it down and then turn to your desired setting. For some reason, it turned a little bit more than it should have. But yeah, the easiest way to basically tell whenever it is adjusted properly is to actually listen to whenever it adjusts. And a lot of people will erroneously put it on the lowest setting thinking that's going to clean better when that actually is not how that works. You're just going to end up stretching out the belt much more prematurely and potentially causing damage to the brush hole and you're not actually going to gain any clean performance out of it. Now on the other side, if you have it too high, you might not get adequate contact with the floor. So you generally just have to listen to the sound and again, make sure the brush hole is turned on for that. So you're generally just going to listen to the sound and you'll be able to know whenever it's too high or too low. In my case, you want to have it upright to change it. In my case, having it on the medium or the medium high setting is the appropriate level for this to be adjusted. And I will demonstrate that real quick. Headphone warning. <laughs> So you can hear the agitation there. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to grab some sunflower seeds right here. These might be too large of the green to demonstrate this, but we'll see. Now if you see them start to bounce towards the machine, that's a good way to tell that it's adjusted properly. So as you can see, they were vibrating. They were vibrating a little bit, but not a crazy amount. Again, it is much larger debris, so it's not going to vibrate as much as something finer like salt or sand. But the agitation on this is really good, and since it is Carpenter Rug Institute certified, you know that it will clean well while also not damaging your carpet. So at least assuming you're using it correctly. And I actually found the performance of this machine to be better than my Tempo, which makes no sense because the Tempo is brand new out of the box, and this machine's a decade old with a decade old brush roller and a couple year old belt. For some reason, this agitates and cleans better than the Tempo. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because the base is designed a bit more effectively, because the base is slightly different. For whatever reason, this cleans better than the brand new machine. I don't know what to tell you. The brush rolls look the same, the belts look the same, the base general design looks the same. Don't know why that is. Maybe that's just a fluke with my Tempo, but we will find out in the full review of that. Now, one thing you did notice is that there is a headlight right here on the front of it. It's pretty easy to get to if you do need to change the light bulb. There's two screws right here. There's also a little carrying handle right here if you want to try to use this on your stairs with the power head. I don't know why you'd want to do that. You'd be very likely for to you'd be very likely to drop it and have it knock you down the stairs. Then you'd both go crashing down to the bottom of the stairs and you'd probably hurt yourself pretty badly and break your vacuum. So I don't know why you'd want to do that. You could very easily just turn off the brush roll and carry this up the stairs with you and just kind of balance it on the stairs, but you would have to hold it, otherwise you could drop it down the stairs, or better yet, just get something different to use on your stairs while you use this for pretty much everything else. So, headlight does work very nice. I wish it was on the base, because generally headlights are more useful whenever they're on the base as opposed to on the machine, because it's actually shining towards what you're trying to illuminate, but it's better than nothing. Newer Hoovers don't have headlights at all, and I do really appreciate it having that feature. Now, I don't understand why vacuum companies don't implement a feature where you can easily turn the headlight on and off with the basic switch. For some reason, that hasn't been a feature, and I think that would be a very nice happy medium for people that both like and don't like headlights. But, of course, if you don't like this headlight, you can either not buy it or just take the bulb out of it, or just ignore it whenever it eventually burns out. So, you have options. Right above here, we have the HEPA media filter. Just pull this straight out. Makes a very loud click noise. So we have a HEPA media filter on top and then some pre-carbon filter on the bottom. This filter generally lasts about every mm, two to five years, depending on your usage. If you really abuse this thing, probably you want to change it annually. And that just slides right in there. You want to make sure the HEPA wording is upright whenever you try to put this back in. A bit tricky, but you can get that back in there, no problem. Now, while this does have a HEPA filter, it's not a sealed system, so you're not going to have very effective filtration with this. And uh, if you're trying to buy something like this for allergies or for someone who's concerned about filtration, this is not the machine I would pick. Any but budget bagless vacuum is really not a good idea because the seals on this machine, the tolerances on it are not very good. This is leaking dust before it gets into the motor. 
and it will be releasing some sort of dust into the air before it even has a chance to get to the HEPA filter. So the HEPA filter, while it is nice to have, it does help filter the motor carbons. It's not going to be the most useful in terms of actual allergen filtration. So that's just something to keep in mind. HEPA filter does, is not the be-all end-all in terms of filtration. So moving slightly up, we have the aforementioned Corby wind, and we have the bin assembly. So you release it by pressing this button right here at the top of the cyclone, and the whole pack comes off. One design flaw I've seen with this is that, as you can see, this cyclone does not fit in here very tightly. So the actual tolerances on this are not very good. It's, it's leaking a lot of air throughout this top portion. These gaskets aren't the best quality. And we also have a gasket on the machine that also doesn't do well. It It's fine. It'll work good in a pinch. But if you don't keep this clean, these get really nasty after a while. We have a little button right here. We just push this to release this into the trash. I'll demonstrate that in a sec. And we, where this Hoover emblem is, you just flip this top up and that pops open. And now you have access to the filter. You can wash this filter in warm water with any sort of detergent or soap that you like with that of being, you know, it can be reasonably good. It just doesn't have to be something too harsh. And let it dry for 48 hours at least and make sure it's completely dry before you put it back in. Depending on your usage, I recommend washing this every three to six months or if you really abuse the machine, probably about every month. The dual cyclonic cassette on this actually does work surprisingly well for a budget machine, but it's not as good as the Elite Rewind that was very similar to this. It's discontinued now, but I did review it. That version has a twist-off cover, and a lot of people have been confused about the way that that works. So this does seem to be a little bit more straightforward, as I've gotten a lot of comments on both of my Elite Rewind reviews of people asking how to get this top off because they've been kind of confused about it. Hoover does have instructions on the back of those and on the back of here showing you how to access all that, but it, sometimes people do miss that. We also have a performance indicator right here. Now, this basically just tells, it's basically just like a gas gauge on your car. It tells you when the machine is not getting enough airflow into it, whether that's because the filter is clogged or there's a blockage somewhere in the machine. That could be any number of reasons why this would trip. Now, I've also heard from some people who live in high altitude places, like Tennessee or Colorado, that this does actually work at high altitude. So you shouldn't have to worry about that if you are in a place that's above sea level. This gauge should still work, which has not always been the case with Hoover uprights. So before we put this back in the machine, I will show you real quick how to empty this into the trash. Although I do recommend generally emptying this outside, but for demonstration purposes, I will show emptying it inside. Don't do this at home, kids. You don't want to get all this crap into your air. But there's this little button right here. Just push that. And that flops open. And for some reason, it also almost launched the bin off of the cyclone. So again, this, this seal is not the best. You can see the, the gap right there. So you can see right there, just kind of opens up very similar to a Dyson. And then, of course, you can just close it right on the side of the machine. There we go. You have to hear that positive click. And then afterwards, you should definitely get some sort of damp cloth and wipe down the outside of the bin to make sure you don't transfer any dust. And honestly, you probably want to just empty this outside or empty it into the bottom of your trash can so that way you don't have a plume of dust and so that way it's not getting kicked back up into the air as badly. And the good news is, since this does have a lever, it does allow you to push this deep into the trash can, so that way you're not actually having to push a button that's right here. So that does help. It's not quite as good as a Dyson where you can hold it all the way down into the trash can, but it does work. Now, one thing I will note, it, I will note is that a lot of debris can get caught in these cyclones right here. So you generally want to pull this apart. You can just twist this. This whole cyclone comes right off, and you can easily clean this off with a brush or a cloth. You want to make sure all those shroud holes are free of any debris, because that's where the vacuum breathes from. You don't want to suffocate it. All right, so I think I've covered pretty much everything about this machine that's relatively useful. Final thing is that we do have the fingertip power control right here on the top. And with that in mind, now that I've pretty much shown every feature of this machine that's all that relevant, we will go ahead and give this a run. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be doing any pickup tests since I'll be doing those with the tempo. And again, they're exactly the same. And I don't really have my general test material. So I'm just going to be vacuuming up a bunch of random sunflower seeds. 
Not really for any particular reason, just happened to have them. But hey, it's good testing material, so why not? Something a little bit different. Okay. You know what? I just shredded a bunch of documents. Why don't I add some shredded paper as well? That'll make it fun. But I don't want to overdo it, because the last time I tried to vacuum up shredded paper in a vacuum, it didn't end very well, but that was also, like, four years ago. Okay. Now, debris pickup tests are usually really stupid, because any vacuum will pick up debris off the top of any sort of board surface. So this doesn't actually prove anything as far as the machine's performance. But, I mean, it at least shows that it's somewhat competent as a vacuum, so at least there is that. It'll be something fun to end this video with. So, anyways, this is Teletype Studio signing out. I'll see you guys next video, and I hope you all have a good one. We're going to vacuum this up and get going. <laughs>